Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. This week we're talking about some amazing uh, new technology and advancements in the world of radar coming from the University of Oklahoma. Today we're talking with Dr. Uh, uh, Robert Palmer. He's executive director of the uh, University of Oklahoma's Advanced Radar Research Center. So, Dr. Palmer, you have developed this new radar called Horse, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But for people that may not know, what kind of technology are we using currently when it comes to uh, radars across the country? Um, well, I mean, most people depend on uh, the Weather Service NEXRAD radars, which are large dish-based uh, systems. So it's sort of like your satellite dish. It's a big uh, dish that's used to focus radio waves onto certain parts of the storm. And then the way that you look at different parts of the storm is by mechanically moving this large dish around. Uh, the dish is about eight and a half meters in diameter. So because it's so large, it, it is, uh, takes some time to rotate and actually see all parts of the storm. So a type of technology that we've been using here for a few years that people may notice is the, the dual polarization. What, what exactly is that part of the technology doing with radars? Yeah, so dual polarization sends radio waves that are polarized in two orthogonal directions uh, perpendicular to each other. And because of that, you, you essentially see a view of the uh, hydrometeors, the raindrops, snowflakes, hailstones uh, in two different dimensions. So it, you can tell if a raindrop, for example, is not spherical, if it's, um, you know, has some other shape to it, which is what happens, you know, because of drag forces in the atmosphere. And so therefore you can tell the difference between small drops and large drops uh, hailstones also have a certain dual polarization signature that's unique and ice crystals. So you can discriminate between different types of hydrometeors with that, uh, with dual polarization. That's one of the main applications. So, so we have that with some of the, ra with the radars now, but a new type yeah. of technology you are pulling into this is the phased array technology. What, what exactly is that? Yeah, so uh, dual polarization is currently on the Weather Service's NEXRAD radars, and um, most meteorologists have become used to it and depend on it. Uh, now, I mentioned the eight and a half meter dish uh, mechanical that they have mechanically steer. Uh, with a phased array, it's you're basically trying to mimic a dish the way a dish focuses radio waves but you do it by having thousands of individual elements. So um, you can think of it like a CCD camera or something, you know, compared to like an analog camera. And so because it's made up of thousand elements, you can um, send signals to those thousand elements in a certain way so that you can steer the beam electronically without moving it. And the great thing about that is you can steer the beam very quickly, like from one part of the sky to the other in a millisecond, where it may take a minute to do that with a very large mechanical dish. So when you combine these two technologies together, how, how much of a game changer is this in changing how we're going from current radar to the one that you're developing? Yeah, well, that, that is the difficult part. We're sort of addicted to dual polarization and all the capabilities it gives us. Phased array radars have been around in the military for decades, but combining those two things, dual polarization with phased array is a huge challenge. And uh, with our new radar, the, the Horus system and, and other phased arrays that are in development, we're combining effectively dual polarization with phased arrays. So we get fast update and we get all this hydrometeor classification and other advantages of dual polarization. So with the, the current NEXRAD radars, most people, I mean, you're looking three to five minutes by the time the radar does the scan and everything. How fast are we talking the data could be updated with this new Horus radar? With a, um, a Horus type radar system, you could get updates every few seconds. Wow. So, you know, most people are used to looking at some phone app and um, looking at uh, the weather service radar data and you get an update of that image yeah, every you know, four to five minutes. And sometimes you're impatiently waiting for that next image to come. But if we had phased ray technology that could also have dual polarization, we could get the updates every few seconds. And so you 
any time you look at your phone, it would always be refreshed. Well, and that, that's something that's being on TV with meteorology. I mean, you're getting a snapshot. And that snapshot can change a lot. Really, if you have a, say, fast moving storm or fast developing, have you all seen in your, your, through the research just how much more you're able to see as these storms are changing? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've taken a lot of data. It's been operational for about a year now in various types of experimental modes and we get uh, temporal resolution on the order of a few seconds. So we've seen things that we have, we've never seen before. How fun with being on your side of this new advanced ra radio radar to see stuff that you've never seen before when you're looking at data. Yeah, and you know, it's not just like a flat image that you typically see with weather radar. This can produce uh, volume images so like three-dimensional structures of storms that you're seeing evolution on the order of seconds. You're seeing updrafts that you never really saw before because I didn't mention it, but the uh, mechanical dish uh, radars, they scan the lowest elevation angles and then they slowly progress up to the upper parts of the storm. So by the time this four or five minutes is up, now you've sweeped the entire storm. But in a fast evolving storm, things can change. So you try to create this three-dimensional image, but the data that at, uh, was taken at the top of the storm is a few minutes older than the data taken at the bottom of the storm. So it, it produces like a distorted three-dimensional image. You were talking about how it's hard to marry the phased array and the uh, uh, dual polarization. How much work behind the scenes has been going on to, to get this radar built and moved out? Oh, it's, it's been going on for too long. <laughs> Probably, we've been in development for about five years and we work with the uh, NOAA National Severe Storms Lab here. So they've been a close partner with ours and have funded a lot of this work. So you were talking about how this, you don't have to turn it. So if you had a day where the radar, like you know now the WSAR 88D is spinning around, but if say you had storms in multiple directions, does it shift and turn or does it, can it send the beam out to multiple areas? So you might have seen pictures of it. It's a flat plate and that flat plate can view about 90 degrees uh, in azimuth angle. So sort of one side of the, of the storm. If you, uh, so we can uh, reposition the array to di wherever the storm is or ultimately you may want four faces of a phased array. So if you have four faces, of course, you can cover 360 degrees. So with the development of this, is this something that down the line could be rolled out as a national replacement to the, the current radar network that we have? Well, that would, yeah, that would be my dream, but uh, that's a decision for the National Weather Service and. They're, they're thinking about that now because NextRad is reaching end of life, I think like in 2040. I know that sounds like a long time away, but it's a, this is the biggest weather radar network in the world. So it's gonna take NOAA a long time to replace it. You were talking about the WSAR 88D reaching kind of end of life. I was reading that the one cool thing with the horse radar is y'all can do updates in it to kind of keep it with the current technology, right? Yeah, so the way the system is designed, um, the electronics uh, uh, behind the array uh, basically are plug and play into the back of the array. So if there's a new electronics technology like a higher powered amplifier or a more refined uh, digitizer, it, it can be redesigned into a new circuit board. and. The radar stays essentially the same, but you just plug in a new uh, printed circuit board. So how did y'all come up with the name Horus for this radar? Uh, well, this guy I was working with uh, several years ago just came up with it. it. You know, you see in these sort of military um, defense systems, they, they take names that, you know, sound cool in one way or another. <laughs> so uh, Horus is the all-seeing eye, you know, the Egyptian god of, of war and sky. And so this all-seeing eye kind of made sense to us because the phased array, uh, we hope, can, you know, see the, uh, the storms well. 
Well, I mean, that's definitely easier than all the acronyms we seem to come up with. Yes. So uh, you, can, you can explain that to people a lot easier. Well, Dr. Palmer, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. It's really interesting. And I mean, as a meteorologist that does TV, I, I could only imagine how nice it'd be to get that fast of update and that high quality of data. But thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Yeah, thank you very much.